Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're worried about the toxicity in the solvents that you use with oil paints, I wanted to share this video with you to show you how to safely remove oil paint from the brushes even if the brushes have been sitting for a while, which I have been known to do, and the paint has hardened on the brush. Okay, all right, so we're back inside now, and I just want to show you how I clean my brushes without using any sort of toxins or solvents. What we need to do to start this off, you need a rag. I love these blue shop rags because they are like cloth and they do not blend, they, they don't leave any kind of surface behind. And if you really think about it, they're made to soak up oils from mechanics that are working on cars. I mean, they're made to soak up that and be rough and be able to pick all that up and, and retain all that. So I think it's a, the best thing to work with oils, right? Makes sense to me. <laughs> the next thing that you're going to need is walnut oil. Now, I use... M gram paints so focus I obviously have M gram oils and this is also what I use to mix in with my paints to get my paints to flow more so it's a pretty obvious choice for me to use this when I'm cleaning up my brushes because anything that's left on my brushes when I mix into my paint there's no difference at all safflower oil walnut oil any, those oils that you can find in the store in bulk for cleaning the brushes will be just fine. All you have to remember is make sure that any oils that you use do not contain vitamin E and I'm going to totally butcher this word so I don't even think I'm going to say it. I'm just going to pop it right there. <laughs> Whatever that word is, you just want to make sure that the oils don't have that in it because what happens is when you clean your brushes with oil which I'm going to show you in a second just wait um, oil is going to be retained in the bristles and when you go back to painting you don't want it to be such a huge difference and with the vitamin E and the other substance what it does is it dries it or it slows down the drying process. So when you do that and you mix it in with the paint that you already have, what it does is it creates an uneven drying surface on your canvas, which is not something you want because later on that can lead to cracking or it can lead to oiling out on your canvases. Just for this purpose, I'm gonna use a little tiny container like this to put my um, oil in. But what I normally do, I have this right here that has a coil lining on the bottom. And that just helps, that helps scrub my brush off when I wipe it on the bottom. It helps to pull the paint off of it. But because you can't see, because it's, it's so big and it I have to tilt it, to clean it off. I'm going to use this little thing so you can see what it does inside of this clear little container. So all we're going to do is pour the, a little bit of my oil into that and get that all nice and ready. So the first step we do before we dip into the oil is we're going to get all the paint off of the brush first. And all you do, just wipe it back and forth, smish it, smush it, <laughs> smush it in between that and just try and get 
all the paint off that's on there as much as possible. And then we take it, you dip it in there all the way to the fur furrow. I don't know, can you see that? Is it focusing? All the way to the furrow. Just get it really in there and smush it around. And you can start to see the paint coming off of it. It's hard to kind of wrap your head around sometimes that oil cleans up oil. But, and then you just wipe it out. Wipe it out on this. And if you see any paint that's left on this, you can just do the whole process again. Just dip it in there and rub it out. And then wipe it out again. And this normally only takes two, maybe three times, depending on how what, what color you're using and how clean you want your brush to get. And it eventually cleans up. Let's that focus. It eventually cleans up, and it's good to go. And the little bit of the walnut oil that you have on there is not going to ruin the paint or your canvas that you're working with. It's 100% safe, healthy, non-toxic. Okay. The other thing I do want to show you is. After you get it clean, you can just leave this alone and let it be just fine for the next time you paint. But I like to do an extra step. Now I know this is completely not necessary, but what I like to do is I have this Master Touch soap that I use. And all I do, and this one is actually the hand soap because I ran out of the, um, <laughs> the brush cleaner that I normally have. So I'm just using the soap, but it's essentially, it works the exact same way. So I just get the bar of soap wet and then I just take it. Let me get closer for you. And I just scrub this in here. And very easily that's all I do just one quick little pass and that's cleaned up put it in water I have this at the bottom of my sink that I just rub this along to get extra scrubbed clean from the water and the brush cleaner is also a preserver I will leave a link to all of this in the description below. And then, me being the OCD person that I am, I always flatten and shape my brush back to back to its original shape. So when I go to use it again, it's dried like this. And I've always felt that that helps it a little bit. Whether it does or not, I always feel like it does. So that's um, what I like to do. Even though I think I, I think like a pack of these, I think a pack of 12 of these was only like $10, which again, I love these brushes. I use them all the time and I can't believe that they were so inexpensive. And if you do want to check these out, I will leave a link to these in the description below as well. If you forget to clean your brushes and your paint dries on them like this one is right here, grab some of this Masters Hand Soap and just put a little bit of water in it and scrub the brush that you need to loosen up the paint with. And then I use this thing on the bottom to give it an extra scrub. I like to protect the bristles with my fingers so while I'm pushing down on this soap some of my fingers is also smushing the bristles into it. 
And then I like to use this pomala oil and just a little bit in my palm of my hand because I feel like the palm of my hand is a lot softer and I can also feel if there are any bits of paint left in the bristles. And I just go and I just wash that out really good and loosen up anything that's left in it. But this is pretty much the last step I take when cleaning a brush. And then I just beat the water out of it, or like Bob Ross would say, beat the devil out of it. <laughs> and it's back to normal. It's soft and usable, and it's not hard anymore. To dry your brushes, you can either lay them flat, which is perfectly fine, and what I normally do most of the time, or you can use this little device right here and hang them upside down. Now this is normally for my acrylic paintings. I normally put water in the base of this, but I stopped doing that a long time ago. And sometimes I use this just for drying some of my brushes. When, if I have very expensive brushes that I really want to take good care of, I'll just take the brush and I'll pop it into this spring coil which allows the water to drip down out of the brush. You know, let just gravity do its work. So that's one way you can do it. Or you can lay them flat on the, on the thing would work just fine as well. I really hoped you all enjoyed that video and was able to at least take away something from it. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. <laughs> it really does help my channel a lot. And leave a comment down below. I really love hearing from all of you. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.